You know, I come from a very small tribe in Northern California. Gold was discovered in our waterways here in you know, 1840, 1848, 1849. The, the tons of gold that was extracted from here that really created the, the state of California. But yet that story is the complete opposite for us. That's like where everything was lost. I mean, there was wealth, there was bounty, um, there was religion, art, and it was all completely based on the land and the animals and this perpetual motion of true sustainability that the Nisenan people had here in their, in their landscape. We acknowledge, we acknowledge that these are ancestral homelands homeland of the Nevada City Rancheria, Rancheria Nisenan tribe. We acknowledge this land was taken repeatedly with no compensation or regard. or regard for the lives and ways of the original people until they had, had no, no land left. left. We, we acknowledge we are settlers here. We are settlers here. Settlers here. That we live, love, and work on land that the Nisanon never, never ceded. That the Nisanon never ceded. Does reading and hearing the land acknowledgement make you feel? What emotions come up? Um, pretty angry, uh, restless, and actually um, hopeful because I feel like if we can acknowledge that, like not only in our words but in our hearts, it's progress. I think until we acknowledge what happened in the past, our world can't be inclusive. We should give these events in the past like more recognition than we did back then when they happened. They make me feel heartbroken for the Nisenan people because I know that the indigenous people, especially here, are really hurt and they have a lot of generational trauma. So generational trauma is when something traumatic happens to a group of people or sometimes just a person. In this case, it's Native Americans. The way they deal with their trauma is passed on to their kids and their kids' as kids and so on and so forth. And like as a Jewish woman, I definitely understand the effects of generational trauma and how it is with you all the time. It is why a lot of times you will see in the Native community a lot of people struggle with drugs and alcohol, it's because it is a lot of the time the way that they cope with their trauma that has been passed on to them for generations. The Gold Rush is in this town, in Nevada County in general, is seen as a really amazing thing because it is why our towns were founded. Um, but if you ask any uh, native from around here, they will tell you a very different story of uh, genocide. When you fail to acknowledge this extremely traumatic thing like the gold rush and how our town glorifies it, it is actively traumatizing people. And until we are inclusive and we understand that things like the gold rush were not amazing things, and we learn the real history behind it, people are always going to be on the outside and always gonna be hurt. Tens of thousands of people from all over the planet came into our homelands. And unfortunately for us, the impact was the worst. Um, they say like 98% of the population was gone in the first five years. It is really heartbreaking to know that we haven't done much to compensate for what we've done in the past. But it also gives me hope since we focus, have been focusing so much in school. Like, And then 
Damien, thank you. It's important to use our privilege because the privilege was given to us by people who hurt others in the past. So though we may not be directly related to hurting those people, there's a moral responsibility to help those who were hurt in the past. For our Better World Day project, we, were part, we are partnering with the Nevada City Rancheria Nisanon Tribe and CHIRP, which is an organization helping the Nisanon in their journey with federal recognition. I'm the spokesperson for the Nevada City Rancheria Nisanon Tribe. I'm also the executive director of our nonprofit CHIRP, which is the California Heritage Indigenous Research Project. CHIRP is the organization that helps support the preservation, protection, and perpetuation of the Nisanon people and their culture into the future, while advocating for the restoration of the Nevada City Rancheria's federal recognition. Originally, our Better World Day project was to launch a letter writing campaign for the tribe to obtain federal recognition. And I'm gonna turn it over to Shelly to um, give us a little talk more about the Nisanon and about their campaign for federal recognition. What federal recognition would do, like if you guys had a magic wand and you hit me with it right now and ta-da, we are federally recognized. <laughs> um, the government would pay the tribe to assist in building the government again so that we can take care of ourselves and our people. And we would have access to all the federal Indian programs, housing, health, education, economic development. Um, but a month into the project, we were asked to halt. Shelley got some advice pointing out that the representatives, the people we'd be writing to, really dislike it when there's letter writing campaigns without active legislation. So we were asked to pause until CHIRP decides what the next steps will be, um, in which case I know the school is going to write letters as soon as they tell us we can. So I think in pausing a letter writing campaign, I think what's, what's beautiful is that it's complicated. So of course, I don't want us to ever stand in the way of what progress could happen, but when we are taking the lead from the local Nisanon folks, then we need to take their lead. And so they let us know, hey, could you please pause? So when I think about the, like, what is my role? It's like my role is a listener, my role is an amplifier, my role is to make sure that I'm considering what I can do to be of service and be of help and not center myself. But yeah, I want us to keep this excitement going. And, um, you know, if, if us having to stop the campaign bummed you out at all, I know how you feel. But as we were asked to halt, we were thinking, what's a way we can still help without interfering with what they need? For my Better World Day project, I used what little knowledge I had of writing music to put together some chords that I thought somewhat well represented my feelings on the whole Nissanon tribe situation right now. Here's what I came up with. There was another project, which was an art project. Um, it was not to create artwork about the Nisanon people or their culture because we did not want to culturally appropriate them because we do not know enough about them and it is not our stories to tell. So the art project was, however, to do an art piece about how you feel about the fact that you live on stolen land. went really well and until the letter writing campaign is relaunched which hopefully at some point it will be 
uh, we will continue working with the Nisenon tribe to spread the word and make sure that they don't go extinct. You're absolutely on the right path. There's no book, there's no 101 terminated tribal re-recognition book somewhere. Um, so what we, I mean, what I do is I go forward until I hit a wall and then I go, well, that wasn't the right way and then I go another way. Well, I've really appreciated that this project is about making sure that the land acknowledgement not only happens once, but becomes a part of what we do as a crew here regularly. So I see it in things like our board meeting tonight, our graduation, our other ceremonies, and other times where we're welcoming um, folks to campus to just be a part of raising awareness. This kind of work is long work. I mean, it's a long work. It, it, decades, I mean, generations for our family with the tribal issues. Um, you know, my grandpa was doing it, and then my mom, and now it's me, and I refuse to pass this on to my daughter. I refuse. So I just believe that the student voice can never be underestimated. And when you see injustice, and when you hear injustice, I have seen the most amazing advocacy, allyship, passion, um, and, and concern and support for, for self and others, and I'm just inspired by that. I want to challenge anyone who watches this video to do research about the people who live in the town or city that you live in. Um, see if they have any organizations that are trying to help them and advocate for them, but listen to them and help in any way you can that they want you to, right? Don't overshadow them, but research them. <laughs> And what I would love and appreciate is for people to understand that these injustices are still here for Native people. They've not been resolved. This story is not uncommon. Wherever you are geographically, there were people there. And something, some kind of extractive industry and people moving because they needed land and wanted land, those original people, something happened to them. <laughs> And it's worthy in 2021 for us all, I don't care, all of us, me included, to open our eyes to those facts. We acknowledge that these are ancestral homelands. The Nevada City Rancheria Nisenon. Nisenon. Nisenon tribe. And as far as us personally, every time someone says the word Nisenon, whether you know an ounce of history or not, you're unerasing us.